All right, I've just added the uh, ends of the scarf that are loose, made out of uh, monster clay, and uh, I'm going to paint them in a second. I'm just trying to see. I'm going to wait and see what it looks like once I get it painted and see if it adds anything or detracts. But uh, I did the best I could do. What I did was I flattened out a piece of clay, rolled it just like the uh, material would have been rolled, and uh, put it on the uh, knot of the uh, scarf. I don't know if it looks real or not. I Well, I've got to keep playing with it. Time to play with some clay. Alright, I think what I'm going to have to do is figure out where the hat's going to go on his back. And uh, go from there. Okay, I'm going to heat up my blade. I've decided not to put the hat on his back. It's just too hard with the wind action to have the hat back there because it would be flopping all over his back. And it just would look a little odd. Like it looks odd on a person who's actually in the wind wearing their hat on their back. So, I'm going to cut the top of his head off so I can put his hat on. Oh, I hate doing this. But I don't see any other way of doing it. I'll come back when I get the hat ready to go on. Yeah, it's... Yeah, it makes it hard to see the detail in his face, but nothing I can do about it. It just, design-wise, it's just going to work out better this way. Now I just got to build up his uh, crown of the hat. Now, the beaver felt hats with a brim on it would uh, be soft. Um, you could almost roll them up and put them in your backpack and it'd come out perfect. And uh, so I'm just trying to get the uh, action of the wind on the hat itself. I have the wind coming from behind, which is kind of pushing his hat up like that. But I don't want his face completely covered by the, the brim of the hat. So I've got this part up, which gives it kind of a schwank look to it. Because I still want that face to show a little bit. And the key is to make the, the crown of the hat match his head. You don't want the front of the crown behind the forehead. Make it look like the forehead's been cut off. So I've got to try to uh, line all that up. So I'm going to bring my clay. I'm sorry, I'm working around the camera here, so it may shake a little bit. I'm sorry. I'm just going to block it all in. And the same with the sides of the head. You want it to match the width of his head, too.
It wouldn't have been a real tall hat either. I mean, crown-wise, it would have been a low. It was a style back then. And, uh... I'm sorry, my hand's in the way. I'm just going to turn the cameras off. I can't work with the cameras on. It, it doesn't show anything anyway. My hand's in the way. Okay, I gotta paint this hat to look like the clay. Just less confusing. I came up with a method of doing this back years ago when I was working in wax and clay. And I'd show in a gallery and I got a million questions about what is that material when looking at a dark brown clay, I mean wax with the clay. And I had to explain it over and over again that it's just wax and that it's just another material that I use to uh, sculpt with when I work on a clay. Well, I found it's a lot easier to paint the uh, different materials that I use that aren't the clay that I'm working with and to try to make it look like the clay I'm working with. So I got the idea of taking a sample of clay to local hardware store here in Ennis, Montana and to uh, see if they could match the color of the clay and they did and uh, I've been using paint ever since that's been matched to the color of the clay it just takes a little question out of a person's mind when they're looking at your original clay and trying to decide whether to buy something a lot of people don't have the vision that you have in your head when you're sculpting and you have to take away all questions so that when they look at it they see it the way you see it just a little better by the way while I'm putting the lid on my paint I get I get a flat finish indoor paint non-glossy I do not like glossy it doesn't look good especially when you got it next you know trying to compare it to your clay you don't want some part of your clay all glossy so all right i've already ran uh, my uh, monster clay through the pasta machine to make my uh, fringe i like my fringe to look uh, evenly cut so that it looks you know like fringe and uh, i've made a bunch of it to uh, go on his shirt Now, I don't know whether I'm going to put fringe all the way down his sleeve. I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to do that. Uh, I might try it but uh, and just see what it would look like. But uh, let's see what it does. I don't want to have it so difficult they can't cast this. And uh, I'm putting the fringe right on the back. Part of the sleeve. Ah, that, that's too much. I'm going to do it right at the uh, shoulder uh, seam. And I've just got to work this out how I'm going to do it. Not quite sure how I'm going to do it yet. I am going to start putting a fringe on the front of his sleeve. Or on his front of his shirt. And I got to constantly keep in mind the detail work so that, uh, I don't get carried away with it because they've got to be able to cast it.
Now I cut the fringe all to be the same length. And uh, I'm just separating some of these a little bit. Okay, just a little bit of paint on this clay. Now, if I don't like what I've done, I can always take it apart and do it again. Okay. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Good night. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. It really would help me. Also, check out the link below this video. It will take you to a review of my nine instructional videos that could be very helpful to you if you're thinking of sculpting. Good night, everybody.